Kelly was able to achieve his highest monthly view count ever at 511 million in May 2020. However, you don't have to be an expert in data analytics to see that after May 2020, something began to go horribly wrong. I knew this day would come. I've just been Sunny v 2 If you don't know what that means, let me explain. Sunny v 2 is a YouTuber that makes videos about things that went wrong on this very much platform right here. And they get a lot of views, all right? 16 million, 14 million, 12 million. Now, he mostly talks about YouTubers that used to be big on this platform, but aren't anymore. And well, I knew this day would come. <laughs> about two hours ago, Sunny v 2 uploaded the video with the title, The Brutal. 92% decline of jelly. Has it been that much? I was probably talking about my channel's performance. At one point, I had 511 million views in a month. This was at the start of COVID, and well, it was crazy, but now I'm rocking 47 million views a month. Yeah, that's, that's like 90%, bro. Well, I think I've said enough. Let's watch this video together, and I'll respond to everything hateful or supportive that Sonny V2 has to say. How did Jelly lose 92% of his audience in only two years? Mm -hmm. Did the content become repetitive, boring, and unremarkable? Did he become too focused on okay. important things outside of YouTube? Oh. Or was his decline the direct result of Jelly's highly successful trio eventually coming to an Ooh. end? We're gonna provide- There's blood! Yeah. We're gonna provide a step-by-step -step explanation step by of step. why Jelly's channel hasn't been doing so well, which is most easily understood if we discuss okay. how he became successful in the first place. Oh, he's gonna talk positively about me. This is not bad. We're off to a good start. I like this guy. He had already been making videos for around three years on two prior channels. Yeah, I've been doing this for result, a while. He had already built up some fairly significant skills. For example, Jelly clearly understood the basics of branding with almost every thumbnail featuring a clear element of green. Thank which you. Which also helped Jelly to release his first line of merch only three months after Still the wearing it. Channel. Still However, wearing it, man. However, the which things began to get serious was oh. when Jelly became one third of what came to be known as the robust trio. Oh, in the beginning of the group, the only two significant members were Jelly and Quebblecop, who had already okay. created a couple of viral uploads. I'm gonna pause there. Um, everything I see something that's incorrect, I'll pause. It never really started with just me and Quebblecop. There were uh, two or three others, and basically we were just a group of friends playing. However, me and Quebblecop were always there, and the other guys were always switching in and out. And eventually, Slogo came. Quebblecop then explained that he and Jelly realized that they could go viral by simply having a fun time together, which became significantly easier after the two announced that they were moving into a house together. Woo! Me and Jordy are checking out a place. This is the place where me and Jordy are hopefully gonna live. And while Jelly and Quibble Cop were yeah, already that was good. insane that was a nice house. as a duo, it will be after adding a third member that things began oh, to get crazy. Is. Slogo Man or Slogo appeared on Jelly's channel for the first time in a video titled Sailing with Monster Trucks. Uh -huh. And after this video received an above average view count, Slogo what? became a regular part of the group. I had no idea that that video went viral and that's why we brought him on. I just wanna clarify one thing. We never actually like brought Slogo on to the group. It wasn't a group yet. Robust, whatever people used to call it, didn't exist. It was really just me, Quabble Cop, and some other guys having fun. And Slogo was there too. And eventually it just kind of naturally happened that it ended up being only me, Quabble Cop, and Slogo recording all the time. And the name Robust was never an official group name. Um, sorry. Sorry to say this. It wasn't for a while anyway. It's not like the Sidemen. They they clearly had a name from the start. We were a bit scared of becoming too close. I'd say we still wanted to be individual YouTubers, but we also wanted to upload videos while playing together because that's a lot of fun. But, but while all of this was happening, I was also uploading solo content, so... Yeah. Since they played GTA 5 more than any other game, they'd collaborate and grow together in almost every single video. With yeah. Josh there, there almost was a, a much better chemistry. Jordy is always the one who's probably the best at the game. Josh yep. is always the annoying one, yep. and I'm always the one that no, Josh is. Quit. Josh was actually kind of the smart one. He wasn't the annoying one. I was the annoying one. Still am. Now it's just me and Josh. You know, the others have left. I'm still the annoying one. Like that's a good chemistry. It chemistry. Well. Which resulted in Jelly <laughs> reaching a million subscribers only 12 months after oh, creating God. his channel. Crazy, God. right? I saw it. I saw it, I, Like, I don't want to brag or anything, but my channel reached 
1 million subscribers in 12 months in 2015. That's eight years ago. That was pretty good. That, that was that was impressive. As mentioned by Quobble Cobb, some of their real life videos performed unbelievably well, yes. such as this simple five minute Q&A on Slogo's channel. Yeah, we definitely realized that. Has received over 17 million views. Over on Jelly's channel, almost every vlog he'd post was oh. equally popular. Wow. As a result, Jelly passed 5 million subscribers Whoa. year after hitting 1 million. I'll say something about the real life content. Slogo, back then, Quobble Cop and I, we had an issue. That issue was we didn't live together. Now, I know that me and Quobble Cop lived together, but we only lived together for less than a year, and then we decided, you know what? This isn't good. We were on top of each other too much, and, you know, we were living together and playing video games together all day, every day. We had to separate that and focus on our content. If we would have lived in the same city like Amsterdam or London, we would have been able to post so much more real life content. I think that would have been even crazier. This one especially. This is uh, during a summer trip. Slogo visited me. Um, he just flew over. We had a couple of fun video ideas. Plus, we wanted to have some, some fun. And we recorded this like skit where basically I thought I teach Slogo how to drive a car. And it was hilarious. 21 million views. This patience test, I think, was recorded in another trip, but yeah, we all had to fly to like be with each other. And this was a disgusting video. And this was another trip, the top one. You see, constantly when we have to record real life content, we have to travel. It, it was an issue. By 2019, Jelly was gaining well over 200 million views every single month, mm -hmm. helping him to receive his diamond play button and purchase wow. a $6.5 million property in Monaco. Okay, However, uh, didn't buy that. <laughs> Sometimes clickbait is too effective. Yeah, I know that was just a house tour of, of, of a house I lived in at the time, but I didn't buy it and it's also not worth six and a half million. I'm sorry, you got clickbaited. 2019 would also mark the point at which the robust trio began to fall apart. Yep, that did happen. While Jelly and Slogo continued to collaborate on numerous different gaming videos, Quebblecop instead began to focus on reaction content yep. and therefore began to appear in fewer and fewer of Jelly's videos. That did the happen too. The robust trio was dissolving in front of everybody's eyes, but it didn't actually have all that much of an impact on Jelly's views, which if anything only continued to grow after Quebblecop left. Well, I wouldn't... I'll just say something. I wouldn't say that Quabble Cop leaving explains the growth. He wasn't slowing us down. The ball was already rolling and it was still rolling when he left. Josh and I were just still having a good time. Around this time of the graph, COVID hit and that explains the huge growth that uh, happened after that. By taking a quick look over Jelly's content at the time, we can see that he still had an abundance of different games to play. He was constantly innovating with new ideas, titles, and thumbnails. Thank Plus, you. in January 2020, Robust became a trio once again Ooh. after Quibble Cop was replaced by a YouTuber named Craner. I, I wouldn't say it was replaced. It kind of happened naturally, too. We just started playing games with him and it was fun. We were just having fun. After Quibble Cop was replaced by a YouTuber named Craner, who had the most subscribed channel in all of Denmark. I Three months that. after Craner joined, Craner? Jelly was able to achieve his highest monthly view count ever at yeah. 511 million in May 2020. <laughs> However, Jeez, you don't have to be an expert in data analytics to see that okay, after May 2020, yep. something began yeah, that's to a go red line. horribly wrong. I, I, uh, the, uh, yes. You know, did I do something wrong? Probably. Does it feel like I did something wrong? No. The problem is I kept doing the same thing. And I think this is an issue for a lot of YouTubers. Time moves quickly. People grow up. If you are 15 years old and you're watching me, your mindset's gonna be a whole lot different by the time you turn 18. That's only a three year time span. Now I can either try to follow your interests or stick with the same thing that I've been enjoying the most. I think it's important as a content creator to not change your content for anybody. You should create content that you enjoy making, but also obviously try to make the most out of it. Not just in video performance, but also in the amount of effort you put into a video and just the amount of fun you're having. Now, I'm not trying to say that I'm never going to change my content, but I think a lot of gaming YouTubers will agree with me that the biggest struggle being a gaming YouTuber is to decide between growing with your audience or keep doing what you're doing. And eventually, some people might get bored of it. But at the same time, you're going to find new people that are going to watch your new content. Now, you might look at that fat line and, and, and say, well, that didn't really work out for you, did it, Jelly? Most people seem to forget that 50 million views in one month is still more than most big gaming channels out there. 500 million views in one month was at the peak of COVID. Um, everyone's inside. All schools were closed. People were being homeschooled, if not being schooled at all. That lasted for about a year. And that was a very good year for me. But then, yeah, when people start getting back to work, when people start going back to school, there is a decline. And that decline can be unmotivating. Um, 
I want to say I was hugely unmotivated, but I think over time, I probably put less effort into my videos than maybe I should have. And I think a factor of that was because, well, I didn't change anything, but channel performance was going down because, you know, the world was restarting. And to be frank, keep in mind that I was also inside for a year. You know how boring that was? After COVID, I realized I gotta enjoy my life. I can't just sit here and play video games all day. Now, we should begin by stating that there was unavoidably gonna be some kind of decline. From okay, he's talking about it. Million view high point, as almost every gaming YouTuber oh. was going through this. So we grab strats from Laserbeam, who actually has a similar line than me, and Cypher PK, who doesn't. I mean, he's got a peak there in COVID. A lot of people peaked in COVID. So if we ignore these views, which had come about from people simply being at home, yeah. the real decline of Jelly began in early 2021. Sure. To cut Jelly some further slack, we should also highlight that Minecraft Among Us and GTA 5, the three main games that he was making videos on yeah. at the time of his decline, were well past their peak in popularity on YouTube. Oh, and very true you too. you could definitely make the argument that the first reason for Jelly's viewership decline was that people were simply getting bored of watching oh, these games, yes. which is a problem still faced by the gaming genre today. Thank you also for saying that. The four biggest games on my channel are GTA 5, Minecraft, Fortnite, and Among Us. Now here is how old all those games are. They're pretty old. I think a lot of gaming YouTubers, especially in 2022, struggled with finding new games to record and have fun on. Maybe I should correct myself there. There's a lot of very good games that maybe works on Twitch or works for an older audience. But with my channel's demographic, it was more difficult and i think this year is going to be even more difficult there's literally no good games to play i just love gta though i i can i can we just bring back more gta it's fun all right i know it's 10 years old but who cares there haven't been any hugely popular game releases after among us in february 2021 which was basically the same month where jelly's views began to decline therefore the most popular games that jelly can play are roblox among us minecraft and gta 5 all of which are years beyond their peak in popularity jelly has clearly noticed this problem himself Ooh, here we go. From one of his tweets reading can gta 6 just be released already with I a did possible say that. motive for this being that jelly is tired of playing the same same old games on his channel. Yeah, I'm not saying that I'm tired of it, but yeah, it will be nice to get like GTA 6 for once. It's literally been 10 years, Rockstar. I grew up playing the GTA games and you know, it just sucks that we've had to wait this long. Now, I know the game's probably gonna be pretty good when it comes out, but hey, been 10 years. This might also provide an explanation for why Jelly's content has become a lot more repetitive and far less innovative. Sure. Back when his views were exploding in 2019, Jelly was pushing the absolute limits in terms of ideas, thumbnails, and titles, which as mentioned previously, was aided by the abundance crazy, of different yeah. popular games. These days, however, it feels as though Jelly isn't pushing these boundaries oh, in the true. same kind of way. The ideas, thumbnails, and titles feel almost identical to where they were three years ago, also but they're true. now being applied to less popular games. Then there's the problem of the content itself, which in all honesty just doesn't feel like there's that much effort going into it. Also, sure, the true. editing on each video is fantastic, Thank but they you. give off the vibe that Jelly's just played some random game for 30 minutes, sent the footage off to his editor and taken the rest of the day off. <laughs> Wait, what, wait, what was he about to say? Now, I'm sure that this certainly isn't the case. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> I've been doing this for nine years straight. And my job always has been to play a video game, record it, and upload it. Now, thankfully, over the years, I found great people that helped me with this, aka my editors. He already mentioned it, but yeah, my editors are amazing. And without my editors, my videos would be very boring. But that's why you have editors, right? They, like, make it nice. I mean, imagine watching an uncut movie. <laughs> now, something that I find very important is to have fun with your job. Because I, I, in a way, consider this my job. However, I wouldn't say that I take it as serious as a real job. This is not a 9 to 5. I'll sit down at my desk in the morning. I'll wait for Josh to appear. There he is. And we'll just you know, have a look at, hey, what shall we play today? That is literally all routine. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with it. However, sure, there could be more effort. And I definitely believe that if me and Slogo would put more effort into our content, the channels, not just mine, but also his, would perform better. But it's also not necessarily something that I'm after. Like I said, after COVID, I realized, hey, you know, there's more to life than just being inside and playing video games for a living. And he's probably gonna mention it later in the video, but yeah, bought myself a nice car. I feel like there's nothing wrong with it. I don't know why YouTubers get a bad rep for doing it, aka purchasing 
something nice for themselves. As long as it's not like a stupid purchase. Is a Lambo stupid purchase? Not really. Depends which one. <laughs> but for some inexplicable reason, Jelly gives off the vibe that he isn't as committed to the content as he used to be, which is an absolute necessity for the growth of a channel. That is an absolute necessity for the growth of my channel. And I'll be honest, I am not putting 100% of the effort into it as I probably should. It's no coincidence that a creator like Mr. Beast is constantly going out of his way to reiterate oh, yeah. that he wants to be doing YouTube for at least another decade. He's signaling to the audience that he's in it for the long run and he knows that as soon as you stop committing to your YouTube channel the audience will as well. Yep. Meanwhile Jelly does the opposite to this by stating that he sees his own channel as being dead. I'm not on this list. Where on this list do I belong? I consider myself pretty dead. Hey I, I <laughs> consider myself to be in the dead category. I, I also considered myself in the dead category for this video specifically because I didn't want to make myself seem better than anybody else. Imagine I put myself up as a god category YouTube. YouTuber. That would have been a little selfish, I think. I also feel like gaming YouTubers have, in a way, less clout as somebody that makes real life content. For example, Logan Paul or Jake Paul or David Dobrik. They're huge. They might not have more or many more subscribers. I don't know their subscriber counts, but you know what I mean. They have a different demographic and they have different content. It makes them look a whole lot bigger. And I think that's an important thing to realize too. There. And to make things even harder for himself, Jelly makes it very obvious that he's distracted by unnecessary things from outside of his channel. <gasps> now we're gonna oh. make a point that's somewhat similar to the one made in the Quebble Cop video, being the foolishness behind sharing a luxury lifestyle to social media. Although we're gonna approach it from a slightly different angle, because if anything, it's worse in the case of Jelly, as he's so obviously distracted by ego-related purchases. Oh, here we go. Oh, this in is early bad. 2021, during the same time period where his views began to decline rapidly, Jelly announced that he'd purchased a $10 million boat. At the start of this summer, I actually ended up buying myself a nice boat. So this right here is the exact boat that I had purchased, and well, I wish it was $10 million. Well, I wish it wasn't, because that means that I would have overpaid, but Sonny, I clickbaited you. Okay, the, the real price is, is here. Yeah. It's still a lot of money, yes, but it's about 1% of $10 million. That's In the very nice same nice video, boat. Jelly explains that he's also purchased a green Lamborghini Huracan. I also bought... <clears throat> <clears throat> a Lamborghini. To go with his already existing Lamborghini Urus. <laughs> in September 2022, Crazy, right? Jelly posts another video explaining that he's bought an abandoned mansion, Oof. which looked as though it needed a fair bit of work and a lot of time away from being committed to YouTube. I see so many business people get burned and what they do is they start making some money and then their lifestyle just creeps and it grows into this massive hungry beast that then consumes them. And what you've got to be very careful true. with is you can't let the byproducts of your thing distract you from your thing. Ooh, this is a pr wow. Good quote. Good quote. I will say though, I never considered myself a business person. I'm not good at business. I'm simply here on this platform creating videos. And for some magical reason, my channel blew up over the past nine years and I've got 20 plus million subs and God knows how many views. Now, yes, I've probably made the right decisions to get there, but I wouldn't say that those right decisions came from a business mind. It was probably more of a creative of mind and it was me and my friends having fun and i think that probably attracted a lot of people too they just wanted to watch something laugh at it have a good time 10 minutes later they're off to something else all that someone like mr beast understands perfectly oh yeah he's always voicing his disdain for luxury and anything that removes the focus from the growth of his channel on the other end of the spectrum you have someone like jelly who seems to be searching for distractions and it's clearly having an impact on his ability to produce top quality content hey hey example, hey that, whoa, whoa that was top quality content that was a really nice video for example in july 2022 jelly uploaded a video titled this isn't working out, Ooh. in which he'd explain that after many years, he was no longer able to produce two videos per day and was instead going to start releasing just one. That's true, Starting I did say now. that. I am going to quit posting two videos a day. This was justified by Jelly stating that the quality of each video should increase. Uh -huh. Lowering the quantity should up the quality. Ouch. At least that's my goal. I did say if that. I can spend more time on a video, that video will turn out better. Although the quality didn't actually change much after posting this, meaning that Jelly was simply uploading half as often as before with minimal change to the substance of the video. Last year, I decided to start uploading once a day instead of twice a day, which is something I had been doing for about five years before that which by the way is insane can we just 
I, I, I can't do it anymore. Like, if I would have to go back right now to upload two videos a day, I simply wouldn't be able to do it. I don't know how I did it. It was an insane routine, and it's kind of crazy. I pulled it off for like five years straight. Now, when I went to one video a day, my focus was, okay, to put more effort into each video. I'd have more time to think of a better idea to play the game longer. And not just that, the whole production process of making a thumbnail and editing a video would have more time. Now, the editing part came true, all right? My editors have spent a whole lot more time per video than previously, and I'd say the edits on my videos are pretty awesome. For the first three months of posting single uploads a day, the quality was definitely higher on production. Wait, the quality was definitely higher. The effort was greater than before. I'd say the videos were significantly better than when I was double posting, but I think I kind of fell into an old routine of the same content I was recording before because that's where i had the most fun slogan i and quabble cob crane or whoever i recorded with we never scripted our videos our videos were always genuine i feel like it is hard to take more time at something when you're just genuinely trying to have fun at it i hope it makes sense what i'm trying to say here but yeah i've definitely been slacking a little bit to say the least. Then there was the collapse of the robust trio, Ooh. but for the second time. Oh, we mentioned second earlier time. that Quebble Cop, who had close to 15 million subscribers, Oof. left the trio in 2019, but was instead replaced by Denmark's most subscribed YouTuber called Craner. Okay. Well, Craner continued to play with Jelly and Slogo for roughly two years. However, like Quebble Cop, he also began to appear in fewer and fewer videos. True. In May of 2022, fans noticed that Jelly and Slogo had removed any mention of Craner in their video descriptions, leading everybody to believe that Craner had been kicked from the trio. Well, okay. four months later, Craner would take to his YouTube community tab to make the following announcement. Okay. Too many theories out there about why I'm not recording with the guys anymore, and I thought, although I always like to keep private, why not just address it so people don't get the wrong idea? Jelly and Josh are great people, and I wish them the best. Thanks, Last year, and also somewhat into 2022, was the toughest time I've gone through. I lost my dad, came out of a long relationship with my ex-wife around the same time too. As most of you know, this resulted in me not recording for weeks or a month at a time. <laughs> the guys were very understanding and sweet. Aww. However, no drama happened. I didn't use them to garner attention then leave. And for people saying I just use them for views, wouldn't it make a lot more sense to stay recording with two of the biggest creators on the Aww. platform? I think so. I wanted a change and I wanted to do my own thing for once. This post not only confirmed the end of the trio, which had made Jelly so successful in the first place, but it also felt like the death of innovation and authenticity on Jelly's channel. The robust trio represented a time when Jelly seemed passionate about making videos, as is highlighted in old comments such as, I enjoyed it more when they were actually having fun instead of just acting for family friendly. I want to say something about the family friendly part. This is um, similar to the thing I tried to explain before, but people grow up and your audience changes. Now I'd say me and Josh are still actually having fun. Now yes, it does suck that we lost some people along the way, but I was in control of those things and neither was Slogo, so we just kind of had to accept it and try to make the most out of it. And I'm going to be honest, I'm still actually having fun. We're not acting for family friendliness. In fact, I'd say we're slightly more edgy than a year ago when we were with uh, three people still. But I partially agree with it, though. It's a difficult spot to be in as a gaming YouTuber because the algorithm kind of pushes you towards uh, having to be family friendly, but in a way you don't want to be. But at the same time, the platform has changed a lot over the past couple of years. There used to be a time where if you weren't family friendly on this platform, you'd simply be demonetized. You wouldn't make any more money. Your videos would stop being recommended by YouTube. Those days are over, luckily. But in those days, my channel grew significantly, so it is very difficult to go back to being a non family friendly channel because I've got people watching me now that almost need me to be family friendly. It's not something you can just change. But I've actually learned a lot from this video. I'm gonna be honest. Sonny, thank you for opening my eyes. Let's have a look at the comments. He's the first YouTuber I've ever seen. Sad to see him go down like this. Oh, I wouldn't say my channel went down. I'd say if you look at a lot of gaming channels who were peaking at COVID, you know, have have a 60 to 90 percent decline it's almost natural the issue with these gaming channels are that these channels mostly attract a younger audience who obviously with time grows up and matures from this type of content now that is very true oh this is a good one the biggest problem with these youtube channels is that they try to act family friendly and then their audience grows out of it and they move into something else which is something we just touched on if creators want to keep themselves relevant they have to change up their content the way they grow alongside with their audience so that their audience stays watching sadly jelly is an example of someone who is doing the same content for a long time doesn't even bother to change his style and of course never tries to grow with this audience very true i would actually say that's kind of on point and that's probably that's probably the end of this video how do i move forwards from this should i just quit 
<laughs> now, a lot of stuff has happened in the past nine years, and I'm not thinking of stopping anytime soon. I'm going to keep doing what I enjoy the most, and that's playing games. There might be some fun, interesting things on, on its way this year. Who knows? I'm definitely sticking to family friendliness on this channel, but maybe there's another... Another place for something else. Sunny V2, don't worry. I don't hate you. I think this was a very informative video, and I've learned a lot about myself. Thank you. <laughs> Click here to watch another video. Do it now.